the last prayer breakfast here was a very toxic affair, full of tension and hatred. The president today, who was deputy president, could not sit on the same table with his boss. And when we were trying to align people around the president, many people around us, we were persuaded that the lady who had removed the chair from where Dr. William Ruto was supposed to sit should be shown the door. And when the president came to learn of it, he said, no, we must reconcile with the reality that is behind us. That lady who was in protocol should remain there and be promoted. And as we speak today, she walks around the president. Again, when the president and his family and their belongings were thrown out of the official residence of the, of the deputy president in Mombasa, most of us were persuaded that those who had participated in throwing out his belongings should be shown the door. Again, he insisted that should not be the case. So what I'm trying to say is that the new administration is one that is persuaded that we need to reconcile the country. We want to plead and persuade all leaders also to reconcile with the truth and the reality. Because even as we reconcile with God and men, we also need to reconcile with the truth. The truth of the matter is that William Ruto is the president of the Republic of Kenya. Let everybody also, as we reconcile with God and with men, start by reconciling with the truth. I was very impressed the other day to see the women rep of Nairobi, Honorable Pasaris, reconciling with the truth in Nairobi that 70% of the people she leads live in the slums. And it would not be wise for her as a leader to oppose a program that is going to remove the people she leads from the slums to dig in it. We are therefore asking everybody, as we reconcile with God and with men, let us also reconcile with truth and reality. The theme of reconciling with God and men could not be more appropriate for our country. I want to give a testimony that the president, on ascending to the high office, has led this country in forgiveness and reconciliation. Most of us who work around him had great difficulties with that approach. But along the way, he has persuaded us and we are now aligned that reconciliation is the way to go for the betterment of this country. The president has exercised magnanimity in victory. Against the expectations of many people who witnessed the persecution that he was subjected to, the harassment, the intimidation, had expected him to go hammer and tongs for his tormentors and persecutors. He shocked all of us when he insisted that he is a Christian. And the Bible has taught him that forgiveness is a calling from God. And he decided to lead this country by giving leadership in forgiveness and matters in consideration. His first appointment on, a set, on being sworn in as president, he shocked all of us. His first appointment was to a man who had made it difficult for him to rise to the presidency. But he was forgiving, he was magnanimous, and that was it. Many people would have expected by now that all those who stood in his path to leadership would be dealt with the way his people were being dealt with being arrested, taken to court, being harassed by KRA, but the president decided 
in accordance with the teachings of the Bible that we need to reconcile this nation. And that is why we have a peaceful country. And Your Excellency, we want to thank you for carrying us along. 